The witnesses and everyone described that he pulled into it at a high rate of speed and they heard squealing tires when the vehicle came to a stop. Um, Justin immediately exited the vehicle. Um, he seemed upset. Um, his behavior was considered erratic um, by many of the witnesses. Um, he would be yelling and screaming, oh my God, what have I done? My child is dead. And then he would stop and he would just have a blank look on his face and just stand there. Justin took Cooper out to the car. Um, he went into the back seat where the car seat was um, situated. Um, it's a rear facing car seat, so Cooper's head would be in between or almost in between the two front seats. He put Cooper in the vehicle. Um, he stated he strapped him in tight and um, Cooper gives him a kiss and he gives him a kiss back and he says he always gives him a kiss in case they get into a car accident and he dies. Um, he wanted Cooper to, you know, his last memory or Cooper to remember that he'd been loved or that his daddy loved him. Let's talk a little bit about his wife and the statements that she gave. Um, when, I assume she was supposed to show up at the daycare to pick up Cooper, correct? Correct. She walked into the daycare. She walked back to um, Cooper's classroom where she ran into um, Michelle. And she asked, you know, uh, why are you doing here? And Leanna's like, well, I'm here to pick up Cooper. And like Ross never dropped Cooper off. And she's like, just got really calm. And she's like, well, I don't know what to do. They walk back out into the lobby. And in front of several witnesses, all of a sudden she states, um, Ross must have left him in the car. And, and they're like, what? There, there's no other, no other reason. It, he, Ross must have, no other explanation, excuse me. Ross must have left him in the car. And they try to console her, and they're like, no, you know, there's a thousand reasons. There. You know, he could have taken him to lunch or something. We, we don't know yet. And she's like, no. At some point, did you put the defendant and his wife in a room together? I did. When you did that, um, who was it that got emotional? The father. And could you tell the judge, what was he being emotional about? What was the main thing he was crying about or, or, or sobbing about or whatever he was doing? Oh, it, it was all about him. Um, I can't believe this is happening to me. I can't believe you know this happened to me. Why am I being punished for this? Um, and it continued. It was all very one-sided. Did his wife ever say anything to him about what he said to police? If she asked him. Um, she had him sit down and he starts going through this and she looks at him and she's like, well, did you say too much? Did you uh, uncover anything and what he was doing during that day while his child was out in the car? Yes. Okay. What did you uncover? He was having um, up to six different um, conversations with um, different women. It appeared from the, from the messages from Kick mostly, which is a messaging service. And is that a computer related messaging service? It is. And these conversations he was having with these females were these what of what nature were they uh, the most common term would be sexting um, were photos being sent back and forth between these women and the defendant during this day while the child's out in the car yes there were photos of um, his exposed penis um, erect penis being sent um, there were also photos of women's breasts being sent back to him he talks about being a guitar player with this girl um, she asked him uh, about cheating on his wife. Did she ask him a, con a question about his conscience? She did. What did she ask him? She well, asked, she, she's who? She's this other girl he is sexting with. Thank you. And she does. Uh, objection. Same no response. way relevant to anything. Final question, he says, Mr. Kilgore. I'm going to allow a question and answer, and then we're moving on. She says something to the effect of, do you have a conscience? And what was his response? Nope.